Let's go over the deal. All right, Victoria Place, Unit 403. I bought this about three years ago. I found the deal through an older gentleman. He lived in my neighborhood, and he had a for sale by owner sign outside of one of his properties. I gave him a call, asked him how much he wanted for the property, and after about five minutes of conversation, he let it slip that he had a couple of rentals around the Foley area, and he was looking to retire, maybe liquidate a couple of them. Instantly, light bulb went off in my head. I was like, hey, let me see what you got. Let's see if we can't work out a deal. And pretty much, you know, we sat down, put the pen to the paper, went over the units, and I found this in his portfolio. It's really kind of popped out at me because I live about five minutes from this complex. I know where it is. I know it's in a developing area, and I saw potential in it. And it was already rented. He had the same tenant for like two or three years, and it seemed like a pretty turn turnkey deal. And after about a week of back and forth, we agreed upon a price of $87,000. And it was a fair price for him. But I let him know that we were going to be doing owner financing, which is pretty much me giving him a down payment of about you know $10,000. And he would finance the rest of the property to me over the course of 30 years for 4.25% interest, which at the time, interest rates were about you know 4%. And, you know, paying 4.25, I was fine with that. It's not a big deal at the end of the day. So, after about a month, we did our inspection, you know, made sure the unit was okay. I met the tenant, made sure she was going to be a good fit. And we closed on the deal. And, you know, instantly, I had a cash flowing property from day one. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to, you know, remodel the place. Instantly from day one, $1,100 a month of rent coming in. So, condo is a three bedroom, two bath. This is what it looked like after I remodeled it. It did not look like this a year ago. I put in new floors, new paint. I put in a little bit of here and there work. Okay. So, over the course of the years, I've been getting about $9,100 of net operating income, okay? That means after expenses, that means after insurance, my HOA fee, after taxes, net operating income means sitting on the table, that's what I'm left with, okay? But that's before debt service, so you don't include your mortgage in that, all right? So with those numbers, I saw that I was getting a 10% cap rate, which... A cap rate is what you use to determine how you're going to get your investment back. So if you have a $100,000 property and you have a 10% cap rate, you should get $10,000 of positive rent at the end of the year. Okay, 10% is a wonderful number. Okay, 8% still a pretty good return. You know, when you get to about the 6% mark, it gets a little risky because you know more than likely you're going to be paying a 4% mortgage and your numbers are just a little bit pressed, okay? Anything over 10%, it's icing on the cake, you know? If I find a 10% deal in this market right now, I'm jumping on it, there's no questions asked. All right, so I paid $73 a square foot. Everything else in the complex was selling for about $90 a square foot plus at the time. So I knew I was coming in with equity from day one. I knew that when I bought it for $87,000, I knew this property was worth about about $100,000, 95 give or take. Okay, So always go into a deal with an exit strategy, which means if I have to sell this property tomorrow, am I going to be able to break even after paying real estate agent fees, title fees, You know, if I have to sell the property at a discount, will I be able to at least break even? And I got that with this deal. All right, so for about three years I've been renting this property out okay and my effective gross revenue is thirty nine thousand six hundred dollars I've been getting thirteen thousand a year thirteen thousand two hundred a year for the past three years my operating expenses has been twelve thousand three hundred which leaves me with a net operating income of twenty seven thousand three hundred okay so 
I put $10,000 down and after three years I got 27300 back out. Hell of a deal, you know. Can't do that anywhere else easily, you know. Cash flow before debt service of 27300 okay. That's before your mortgage. So after I factor in my mortgage, my actual cash on cash return, okay, cash flow is going to be $13,663, which isn't really a lot, but I didn't really buy this deal to live on the cash flow, you know. Cash flow is about $380 a month. That's enough to cover expenses, you know, put some money in the bank just a little bit. It's nothing to really live off of. I mean, I wouldn't go blowing all the cash flow. It's not really what you want to do when you have, you know, only one rental. It's long-term wealth. So, you know, you put down $10,000 and I was getting out about $4,500 a year of actual cash on top of my mortgage. So I was, I got my money back after about, you know, two years, two and a half years, you know, not a bad little return. Okay. After my debt service, I paid down about $47,566 after payments, after everything else. Not a bad deal. Okay. So after paying down my mortgage, after three years, I went from owing $77,000 to $72,518. So I wasn't paying my mortgage. My tenants were. All right. So that's where the passive income comes in. My tenants were paying for me to have a property and to get a little bit of cash flow at the end of the month and for my property to appreciate. So, you know, there's both sides, you know, own where you can rent and rent where you can own. Grant Cardone is huge on that. So your primary house, you should rent. Okay. But I'm going to go into that in a separate video. All right. It's, it's not always better to purchase a house to live in. Okay. Your return on a house, if you're living in it, is not great at all. It's more of a risk than an asset unless you set it up right. You know, she's paying me $1,100 a month to live in this place, but if the AC goes out, I have to pay for it. If there's a leak, I have to pay for it. If the refrigerator goes out, I have to pay for it. That's where the, you know, balance comes in. You know, it's not always better to purchase where you live. All right, so let's go into how I price this. Units were selling for 135, 130, and 130. Okay, that led me to believe my unit was worth about 130 to 135 thousand dollars. So I priced it 145 because obviously people are going to negotiate. All right. So we settled on a price of 125 on the first contract and after negotiations we settled at 122500 and that was about you know let's say $7500 below what I probably should have sold it for but you know I needed the profits from this place because I bought another property in Orange Beach five bedroom house on the water and I need these profits to fix that place up because it needs about seventy five to a hundred thousand dollars worth of work and this is my only rental right now that has one door so all my other rentals are duplexes and I got a 10 unit apartment complex I've got one commercial and now I've got a remodel that you know I'm thinking about flipping it but you know we'll go into that later so I wanted to get rid of this place because it's a hundred percent occupied or a hundred percent vacant when you have one rental, which is one door. Okay, that's why I'm a real big believer in multifamily. You know, if you have one or two units vacant in a ten unit apartment complex, it's not gonna hurt you, but if you're one you know, door, 
your one condo stays vacant for three months, it's going to hurt you financially. It's not going to, you're going to lose all of your profits for that year and then you're going to go into the hole. So, you know, having one rental, that's why I'm not a big believer in buying single family houses and renting them out. Those are more for flipping, but I mean, some people do great with it. Some people have 50 single family homes. I would rather have a 50 unit apartment complex because it's just easier to manage and, you know, you don't have to have 50 different yard guys and you don't have to have, you know, 50 different, you know, insurance policies and 50 different tax bills. I'm more of a fan of multifamily. That's just kind of my bread and butter. All right. Now let's go into our expenses. All right. Hundred and twenty two thousand five hundred was our purchase price. My settlement charges to sell this property was fifty three hundred dollars and twelve at title. My taxes were seven hundred and forty eight or seven hundred and forty one for the year, and those were prorated. Okay. My total cost to sell this property was six thousand and fifty four dollars and I gave away three percent to the purchasing agent that brought me a buyer so you know factor in if you're gonna sell a property you're gonna pay about six percent for real estate agent commissions I'm a licensed real estate agent so I can put my house on the multiple listing service and represent myself I save three percent okay but you know use a real estate agent they're worth 6%. They'll stop you from getting into a lawsuit. They'll get you a higher and better price. They'll make sure you're protected and you're not doing anything wrong. The 6% is 100% worth it. All right. Let's go over some of these fees. My cash was $116,445.97. Okay. I paid the agent on the other side $3,675.00 to bring me a hundred and twenty two thousand five hundred offer you know simple math you know you bring me a hundred and hundred thousand dollars I'll give you three percent all day I'll take that and my title insurance was four hundred and seven dollars and here's a trick that I did for this property and this is a trick that I can do for owner financing anybody can do this okay so since I'm not involved with a bank and I'm negotiating with an owner I owed $73,000 at closing. I basically told them months before I was going to sell it because you know I was already going to pay the mortgage off, refinance it. I told the guy, hey, I'll give you $50,000 cash if you'll just wipe my mortgage off. You've made your money in interest. He rejected that at first. Then he came back at like sixty-eight, and then we settled in the middle at about $63,000, which... That's ten thousand dollars off what I owed, which is you know ten thousand dollars cash sitting on the table as soon as I sell this property. So, not the worst idea ever to offer that if you're under financing. But you know you have to be able to actually refinance it. So they accepted the sixty-three thousand dollar payoff, which meant an additional ten thousand dollars of revenue coming in after paying my lawyer nine hundred dollars to set that whole thing up, process it, pay it off, go through the court system. I gave $900 away. My title fee for preparing the deed was $150. My title search fee for making sure that you know everything was sellable, everything was done right, was about $100. And that's why my fees were $5,312. Okay? So, $5,000 minus the... 122500 got me to $116,445. I took out a loan to pay this place off and I gave the person who loaned me 4% interest on a $63,000 loan. So that came out to be 6505. Okay. And then minus the hundred and sixteen four five left me with about fifty thousand and nine hundred and forty five dollars of actual 
cash after closing worth of capital gains. Okay, and then I factor in my rent collected of $13,663. That comes out to be $64,608. Okay, and that's after you know my rent, my cash, and then after my debt payoff, that's $4,000 added. So I'm walking away from this deal with $68,608 off of a $10,000 investment. It's not a bad return for three years. And I would be, you know, pressed to say I've got 60 hours wrapped up into this deal tops. And I'm being very generous. I mean, I probably have about 30 hours realistically, but let's just say every time I pick up the phone to call a maintenance guy or anything like that, I've got about 60 hours tops in this deal. And if you break that down, $68,608 divided by 60 hours comes out to be about $1,143 per hour is what you're working for. You know, back in the day, I used to work for $10 an hour. This is a better route. I mean, my only complaint about this deal was I didn't buy four more of them. Okay? That would have really been nice. Then, you know, I'd be making about $240,000 off this deal. So, lesson learned, I guess. So, this isn't guaranteed profits. Everything's a gamble, okay? Not every deal you buy is going to pay you like this or pay you at all. It might actually cost you money. You got to run your math. I did my math on this deal probably 20 times over. Even after it was 100% spot on with my math, I still did it over and over again just to make sure I did not miss anything. So, this is just pretty much a case study of what you can do. And this is my smallest deal, okay? This is just one unit. I've got 14 other properties now besides this one, now that I've sold this one. So, I've got 14 other deals doing the exact same thing that this is right now. I've got 14 properties appreciating, giving me rent, you know, they're just multiplying wealth, okay? I've got enough cash flow to technically live off of, but you really don't want to do that. Pretty much all the cash flow that I get from this gets reinvested back into real estate, stocks, you know, cryptocurrency, whatever. I'm not going to get into that conversation. I'm not your financial advisor. This is long-term wealth generation, okay? Let's just use it as an example of, you know, I was getting $4,500 a year off of rent. If I would have held on to this for 30 years, and that's my actual cash flow, cash on cash return, my rental income would have been $135,000 in 30 years of actual cash on top of me paying the whole loan off. Simple math, people.